Welcome to our new series, Mastering Your Mind, where, hey, I am Rose, and I'm going to interview people who are in the expert field of hypnosis and NLP. Here, let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Clinton Smith. He's a psychologist, a clinical psychologist in private practice since 1992, a master hypnosis society people who is a certified hypnotist who's been introduced to Scott McFall at the Master Society System business model of that of change and work of success since 1998. Welcome, Clinton. Thank you for coming here today. Hello. Good to see you. Tell me the story of how did you met Scott McFall in 1998? Yes, I had completed a, a couple of certifications in, in hypnosis, and I ran into a clinical psychology friend who, who knew Scott. Mm -hmm. and said, I know some a guy who can really help you uh, scale your business. You can see 10 or more people in a day. And I said, man, I can't see 10 people in a week. And so he, he urged me to contact Scott, and Scott invited me to come to Sioux Falls. And I tracked him for a, a, a week, seeing people coming into the clinic and, and just got a lot of feedback. And it, it was just a unique experience that I never seen before, nor since. And that weak experience with him really changed my my perspective and my outlook on, on working as a hypnotist, uh, primarily when, for most of my career. Yeah, that you started as a clinical psychologist. You spent a lot of time in the school of study. And how is that different than with the Master Hip Society and feedback. It's a major difference because what we we're learning how to work with clients and to utilize hypnosis to to create change. And in an academic sense, you know, you, you're doing a lot of learning and and, and 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 talking and interacting with people, but the skills to help a person to change their behavior is mm -hmm. absent. And with hypnosis, it is a a field in which you you must take action. You must you must do something to help the client to to create change. And so, so, that's so real, yeah. To create the change, wasn't it different that we will change the way they feel, which is the con the con the context, and yes. not the content of the story. Was it was it a struggle or was it easy? How was the experience like when we had to change? The, our client's perspective by the mood instead of telling the story of the problem. How was that like well, for you? Well, it, it, it's everything to me because I've always wanted to impact people's lives quickly. And when you can guide a person into a hypnotic state or even communicate with them more on a subconscious level rather than an analytical overthinking mm -hmm. perspective, you can get more leverage to help that person to create change. So, you know, it's 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 a totally different approach. And so it was much really it, it was easy for me to make the transition because I was I had already worked as a psychologist for maybe 10 years before I even learned about hypnosis. And so I felt like I was a pretty good psychologist, but it took a long time to create change in people. And yeah, once that, I, I learned that, that's been over. And it's been one of the best things I could have ever done in, in my career. Being a master of society, part of the training system that works with a, with their success and the meaning success stories, could you tell a few success stories in your clinic and what you do that is far different than what we call cl doing clinical work? How uh, is hypnosis yeah. better? Than clinical work because I feel you're going directly to the source of the problem. You don't really have to know a lot of detail about the problem. You just you you just need to get the person to be open to the fact that I'm going to give you suggestions that's going to help you, and mm -hmm. and, and and unconditionally accept them. But if, of course, first you have to get rapport with the person before you can. You can you can help them. But how, how can we get rapport? Because teaching let's teach let's teach the the audience out there a small lessons about rapport. What's rapport? Well, rapport is being able to communicate with a person on a 
subconscious level so that if the person, for example, is a head nodder, then you need to nod your head. Mm -hmm. If a person if a person speaks a little fast, then you got to speed up the way you you speak. Mm -hmm. You want to match them on on breath level on tone in gestures. And so you, you, you need to be in unison, so to speak, with with a client so that there is not this disconnect so mm -hmm. that so that the person feels that they can trust you. You know, people, you know, when, when people are connected and, and you have a good friendship or relationship, then there, there there's a synchrony that, that mm -hmm. goes on and hypnosis is, is is different because without rapport you don't get results yeah you know without I mean? rapport you need leverage as as a hypnotist over with the client so that then they just just do it and they do that right. whatever whatever that will be either to lose weight stop smoking gain success yes. in business it says yes. that as easy as they know their name so then mm -hmm. hypnosis is about focus, isn't it? It absolutely is about focus, about focus and concentration. And, you know, and, and I always tell people that, you know, you can't lose weight folks are going being overweight. Mm -hmm. So having the focus to, to create the change and the outcome is, is what is so much, how hypnosis is different from any other field, really. And mm -hmm. when people are struggling with weight, Mm -hmm. Weight loss. They are focusing on being overweight. They 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 have the habits of an overweight person. They think that way. Their attitudes and everything about food and relationship with food is is totally contrary to mm -hmm. weight loss. Yeah, and what what makes hypnosis so much more refined, so much more incredible, even dare say magic, is because it feels like magic because you just do it. It builds your self confidence and self esteem. Is this is that we create them to pretend that they're going to paint a picture and they just do it as if they know their name. And then all those then habits are in front of their mind and then at times. And then this is totally different than being what we call in psychology, where we focus on the problem. And what when we focus on the problem, what is expected is realized. Could you explain Absolutely. more about that? Yeah, well, problem orientation is, it, I think, is the way to not get results. You know, when I'm seeing a person, my one of my first thoughts is, how can I help this person receive the the outcome that they want? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm solution focused at all times, and so wasting a lot of time talking about the symptoms and talking about the past of the problem doesn't do anything at all. So I'm Primarily, now, I am a behavioral psychologist, so I do utilize being able to observe the behavior and getting them to change their behavior mm -hmm. and and doing things that are concrete that will lead to, to behavioral change. I still very much believe in that, and I blend behavioral techniques with hypnosis. But in terms of helping a person create change, it takes too long. You know, I, I saw a guy the other day who came in for panic attacks and he has seen a psychologist for more than 15 visits and he's still mm -hmm. having panic, still having panic attacks. And within three, four sessions, he will be done with, with panic attacks with me. He won't have another panic attack. He, he's and able so to that, imagine he can have skills, skills in order to get rid of the panic gain perspective, get out of fight to flight or survival mode or stress mode, and then level with the situation, face what it is and find another way around it. And and, and, and that is, is what is coming from a, a clinical counseling background. This is what I love about hypnosis is yes. that the, the change and change happen quick and that they have the resources they need in order to change. So what was impactful about the way the Master Institute Society is run is that there's a reading list. Yes. And then one, one of the first most impactful reading lists that I've ever experienced, and I read quite a few of those 
ex exceptional novels that I get to put a movie in my head and let me have it right here. Let's talk a little bit about this book, which is yes. called With Integrity. Yes, I love that book. I love that book too with Jeannie, Jeannie, Le, Jeannie Labore. Is that right? Yes. And Jeannie what Labore, did you, yes. what did, how did this book impact you as a person or any clinical work? Well, it's it's a, a book written around neurolinguistic programming, and it talks about creating models of excellence and communication. And communication is a response that you get back from mm -hmm. from the person that you're communicating with. And she goes into great detail about how to establish rapport and to also make sure that when you get results, you're getting results not just for you, but for your client, whether that client is a, a corporation or mm -hmm. an individual, dovetailing results is is very important. Right. I, I really enjoy this book on so many different levels because it it, it breaks the, the communication down into a way in which you can see the results. Some some people have to have to know what is it that I'm going to see differently when I make the change. Uh, what right. will I hear different when I create change? What will I feel that's different when I make the change? So this is a far superior way, I think, of helping people to create change, not only in therapy but but in business as well. That is right, because you got great success doing Scott McFall, the Master Society business model since 1998. So I want to just talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But this is what I also appreciate about with Influence Integrity. It is written in a very simple, easy format. 50 cents mentioned in his biography, Hustle, I think Hustle Harder, Hustle, the Hustle book, said that mm -hmm. he used to not be a reader and that when he started to read, he started reading more simple books. And then after that, he went to, to Robert Greene, The 48 Power, A 48 Law of Power. And that's a more complicated book. So he started where he needed to be at, which he read simply, and then he moved on. So then he was encouraging in the in his culture with his people to go, hey, read. Because when you read, you read books like Influence and Integrity, it's like a carbon copy of what the master will tell you what, what you need to do that works. So what I love about it is this, this one easy thing, and then we move on to the next topic is, is that Janie will mention, you got to have an outcome that's clear and specific. And then yes. I remember this analogy when she goes, well, you know, you're going on vacation. There's the pilot. And then you have all the airline stewardess. And then they're going to tell you where you want to go. And you say, whatever you want to go. That's overpleasing. That's a no, no, no. And then he goes, so <laughs> then, then an outcome, if it's not clear, it's like the airplane going in in circles and not knowing where you want to land on your vacation spot. So that yeah. part, part of what we do is get people to get passionate what they see what they hear and what they feel. And the language of it is that to get them to have faith that they can have hope to take the action to get it done and succeed. So that now tell me about the success, the business success model that you gained from the Masters of Society with Scott McFall since 1998. Well, it taught me basically how to sell programs to people instead of session by session to to offer an opportunity by having a person come in for a free consultation. And and back 25 years ago, of course, people were rarely doing free consultations. Mm -hmm. And but this this was a really great way for me to introduce hypnosis to Montgomery where 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 I reside so that people would give hypnosis a chance. So that you know they they weren't you know, they call and say, well, how much it costs? Well, you come in for the free consultation and we'll we'll discuss your issue and mm -hmm. uh, see whether we will be a good fit together. That right. that just ended up being a really a fantastic approach for it, getting a chance to educate people about the myths of hypnosis and, and, and about then they could see the testimonials of other people who 
were getting results back in the day. We, you know, we 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 did handwritten testimonials, you mm-hmm. know, long before reviews were were the thing. Yeah. And so when people saw the the testimonials, oftentimes before they ever met me, they were already believing that they were in the right place to get help. It's 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 all doing a form of suggestions where we're really a covert hypnotist all the time where we are always giving you suggestions to succeed because you know it's like baby we believe in yes. you. So